Hello, my loves. Welcome back to Bahati Life Podcast. I'm Jessica Alexandria of Bahati Life Apothecary and professional astrologer, tarot, and intuitive reader. We're going to be talking about the energy of this week. And my goodness, once again, there is so much for us to talk about. There's so much for us to discuss. Now, before I dive into where we're at right now, I have to quickly look back into where we've come from. What have we already experienced? What has already occurred? This is a great time for you to pull up your own natal chart, your astrological chart. And one of my favorite places to do this is actually astro.com. They're not sponsoring of this podcast, although I've said this once, I've said this a million times before. I wish they would. I wish they were. But they're one of my favorite places to pull up all types of astrological charts from astrocartography to solar returns to lunar returns, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So basically what you're going to need to do is pull, put in your birth date, so the actual date that you were born, your birth time, and your birth location. And then once that chart is up, you can click the blue button that says with transits and see where these, where these current transits are occurring within your chart and what houses, a.k.a. what parts of your life, these energies are unfolding. Okay, it's going to make it a little easier for you. So looking back, you guys, on September 9th, Mercury, the planet of communication, went retrograde in the sign of Libra. Now, if you need full details on what Mercury retrograde is like, what you can expect, I have a full video of that up on my YouTube channel, so I'm not going to dive too deep into that today. And if you need to hear about Mercury retrograde in the sign of Libra, please revisit or listen to for the first time last week's video where, or last week's video and podcast where I talked about that in full. I do want to talk about it briefly right now because the energies that have started and have been initiated last week are now the things that we're going to be seeing and feeling right now as Franklin and Nova battle it out on my green sofa over (laughs) over in the office. Okay, so if you guys hear them, they're hanging out together, but every once in a while they have to kind of like um, assert boundaries (laughs) as far as like whose pillow is who and whose cushion is what. Okay. So, yeah, Mercury retrograde in the sign of Libra wants to highlight relationships. It brings to the surface of our mind people, things, circumstances, events, stuff that has had an important and valuable role in our life. These are relationships that seemingly may have started off, that may have started off like you're attracted to them like you're you're you find them guys for real you don't see me filming like a world-class podcast right now Franklin he's like girl (laughs) he's like calm down (laughs) you cool but you're not that cool all right guys um yeah so um Really quickly, I just have to say this. Like, I know we're here to talk about astrology, but it's so funny because, like, Nova tries to pet Franklin, and Franklin's like, get your paws off me. Get your paws off me. <laughs> it's so funny. Okay, but back back to astrology charts. Okay, serious mode clicked in. And three, two, one, and now, right? Okay, so, yeah, so Mercury transiting through Libra, it brings back initial things that draw our attention. It, it drew our attention in because we're like, damn, this thing is freaking stunning. I don't see myself not having this in my life. Like I want this person. I want this thing. I want this job. It looks so good on the surface. And the way that the planets have been positioned, not only this year, but last year and then beyond, there's a lot of intensity that comes underneath the layer, the level of its beauty. So if this is a person, this is something or someone that you are very, very attracted to. There's a level of attraction that's unlike anything other than what you would have expected. And then underneath that, when you get to know this person or when you get to know this thing, you're just like, yo, there's a purpose here. There's a purpose for there's the, for this connection. There's a purpose for us coming together. There's a purpose for me wanting to work with you or be with you or spend time with you. The same thing happens with healing. So let's say 
you, this has to deal with your daily routine and maybe it's not relationships. Maybe it's how you harmonize in your day-to-day life. So you're looking at the beauty of yoga or the beauty of pole dancing. And I know that's, that's a very specific um, example, but it's like something that you just find so visually stunning and captivating. So that initial beauty draws you in. It's something about it magnetizes its energy towards you. But the more that you practice it, the more that you spend time with it, the more that you develop it, the, the more that you invest in it, the more you start to find that it's activating and inspiring within you feelings that you never thought that you would ever experience that you maybe didn't even know existed. Maybe there's aspects within yourself that are pulled out through the art of dance or through the art of yoga that allow you or enable you to heal, that allow you to be creative, that allow you to be have different levels of emotional expression, all because you were initially drawn to it. And upon staying with it and in the universe drawing like drawing your eyes to it and your heart to it, it pulls you towards it, but you start to understand that there is something more to this than meets the eye. It goes way deeper than just its beauty alone, than just what originally attracted you to it. So now that Mercury is retrograde in the sign of Libra, it's really calling into question, why am I so drawn to this? Yes, maybe I understand that I'm being drawn to it, but like, where does this come from? And if there are areas that as these planets, these major planets, Pluto, Saturn, Neptune, Jupiter, Uranus, as they've gone retrograde all on their own and they've created their own damage and they've revealed certain aspects within yourself that needed healing or aspects within yourself that needed growth, now that you've learned those things about yourself, now that you're breaking pat, um, you know, your, your patterns of addiction or codependency or inability to express yourself effectively or in a healthy way or maybe you have issues with anger or whatever the case is once those aspects within yourself are revealed within the last months or a year those those fractures within your own personality or maybe your character or your existence or your experience or perspective now that they've impacted or hindered this relationship or they've impacted your job or they've impacted your money, your finances, what can you do now in order to repair it and build it? Because there is a certain level of awareness that you've come to at this point in your journey, at this stage in your life where you realize that this very thing that you were drawn to initially, now it's time for you to repair it. You can't help but to feel called back to it, to try one more time, to to, to maybe give it another chance or to, you know, see what, see how, compare notes. How have we learned? How have we grown? Of course, within the last few weeks and half of this year, there's been this huge emphasis on the idea of separation. There's a need to be separated. There's a need to be independent. There's a need to explore, you know, all, I don't want to say all of your options, but explore yourself fully independently without having to rely or look towards anything else. I don't know if this is you having a job and then you're on on the side kind of working your, a, a passion, like you're working a, a side job for yourself that's ultimately going to be your bread and butter in the future, meaning like how you pay your bills, how you pay your rent and how you receive abundance. But it's something about you breaking away from your normal routine Sorry, guys. Nova still has little coughs. Um, it's something about you breaking away from your normal routine or your normal way of thinking or your normal normal perspective in order to truly see and explore aspects within yourself that have been hidden, things that you haven't had the chance to explore, aspects of yourself that have been long abandoned and you're kind of like reawakening them. Okay, so it's there's a lot of a lot of good that's happening within these charts, but as we're even talking about the goodness, I also don't want to skim over how difficult this can be. Because if you are called to start a new venture in your job, you know, you may be trying on all of these different new jobs or new positions, but you may find that yeah, they they may pay the bills, but now you it's like new thing but same experience, right? Or new relationships, same problems. Or new house, same same issues, you know. It's like you may try something new, 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 but find yourself kind of like repeating a pattern. This is what the planets are working on right now in order to derail you off of those tracks. So you're not constantly, you know, find yourself, you know, and like going on this next 
on this journey to this new spot, but end up ultimately back at the same destination. Spirit, the planets, the cosmos are, are trying to teach you and trying to guide you into new places so that you're not repeating past lessons. What have you learned about yourself in the last year? What have you learned about yourself in the last four months? What aspects of yourself realistically can you look at yourself and just be like, you know what? I used to like this about myself, but I'm also realizing like that this doesn't serve me or this thing that I need to have in my life, it would not accept me in this status quo. It's not, a, it's not an attack on your character. It shouldn't attack your ego. Your ego meaning like, this is who I am. This is blah, 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 blah. Who you are is what you know yourself to be. But the planets see you as something that is limitless and beyond the box that you have ever put yourself into. And if you can't see that you might be in a box in your life in some way, in your experiences, and you have a lot of growth here left on earth, like a lot of growth, and there's nothing wrong with that. But at least consider the fact that there's going to be aspects of yourself self that still need to be explored, okay? And there's certain aspects of yourself that are going to reveal itself to you. So there is a certain level of vulnerability. And no one's pointing the fingers at you. No one's saying that you're a bad person. No one's saying that, you know, taking away from the effort and the work and what it required of you to be who you are it's just saying that right now there is something that's in your that you have set your sights on that you know is magical you know it radiates good energy you know that you don't want to live without it you know that it has a purpose there there's something about it that has drawn you to it there's something about it that is is pulling you towards it or you want it to be pulled towards you there's a reason for that it's not coincidental it's not even synchronistic it's divine it's divinely appointed. And with Mercury retrograde or retrograding through the sign of Libra, this is an amazing time in your independent nature right now. The, the planets have forced you into a space of independence in order to really sit down and look at yourself in the mirror and look at the papers, meaning like let's say if you have a company or a business or a corporation, you got to look at your numbers and say, this is where I'm at right now, but what do I have to do in order to make sure that the future is healthy, the future is good, the future is abundant, the future is everything that it could be? And that means that you have to look at the things that aren't working within yourself and shape them up so that you can harmonize, so that you can, so that you can align, so that you can have this relationship. It doesn't mean that you're going to abandon the aspects that make you you. It's going to mean that you're going to tweak and readjust and reevaluate the parts of yourself that may not be healthy and thriving in this next role, in this next position in your life. This has a lot to do with masculine energy, by the way, okay? Masculine energy is not just a, a man being a man or a male being a male or however you identify. It's whether you're a female, male, or whatever, it's how you are able to pursue, protect, secure, and stabilize something that is of value and worth in your life. If you look at yourself in the mirror, do you feel, do you believe yourself to be someone who is stable and solid? Can you protect what is that you feel is yours or do you make excuses do you find yourself getting triggered when someone asks for something of you? Do you find yourself constantly needing to be selfish because you cannot think about others, you can only think about yourself? Do you find yourself needing to attack or to push your way or to, and push your will? These are things that masculine energy within every single one of us needs to be examined right now. Again, this is an opportunity for growth. It's not an attack. Don't see it as an attack. See it as an opportunity for growth because clearly, like I said, there's something here that is of great value and importance in your life. Not only is it beautiful, not only is it stunning, not only is it glittering on the outside, but there's incredible depth here. There's an incredible future here. But in order to really grow that, there's going to have to be some leveling up of your own energies and leveling up of what you know you're capable of doing. You may have self-sabotaged in the past. That may has happened. That may have happened, but now is an amazing time for you to start over fresh, to be renewed, to prove yourself, to try again, and to get it right this time. 
That's for me what I see as I look at the charts, Mercury retrograde in the sign of Libra. It's about doing what you got to do, leveling up, being who you can be, tapping into masculine energy within yourself in order to protect, preserve, stabilize, secure the very beautiful thing that it is that you know your heart wants so, so badly. And you know this is that very that thing, that very same thing that it's like you know that if you protected this garden, it would grow. It would grow. Not only would it grow, it would provide for you and it would also provide for your children and your children's children and their children's children if you continue to to care for it, if you continue to tend to it. Are you ready for that? I feel like the level of um, independence that you've experienced thus far has really taught you a lot about yourself. And on the 10th of September, we had the Pisces full moon, which was absolutely stunning. I know that I've had a few friends reach out to me and just say that they were a bit emotional, like, oh my God, Jess, what the fuck is going on with this Pisces full moon? Girl, I got a whole video about that on my YouTube channel. (laughs) Or like my friends being like, hey, honey, I love you so much. Can you make a candle for me? This shit is hitting the fan. Yeah, I can, but... What was the last thing we said during the Virgo, (laughs) the Virgo new moon? Shit. I'm just kidding. No, I'm not kidding. I'm 100% real with you. You guys know, like, I keep it, keep it 1,000% real with you. Same thing I'm saying to you guys here is what I've said to them. Or maybe they were met with silence because I just couldn't yet, right? Um, But, yeah, with this Pisces full moon, a lot has really shown up. This is that deep 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 intuitive sense of knowingness that says you know what as what I want and what I feel and what I'm sensing defies logic it's like beyond your heart at this point your heart can want something your heart can love something but sometimes that love is not enough in order to make you do something in order to act upon it and with your brain it's like you can know the truth about something or believe something about it but the way that you feel, or, or not the way that you feel, but the way that you think about it and the way that you perceive it is not enough for you to act on it. But that intuitive feeling, that intuitive hunch, that intuitive instinct, that gut reaction that you have, that is undeniable, my love. And you know the difference between your gut instinct and your gut reaction and in, like your intuitive in- instinct versus your logic and your emotions. And if you don't know the difference, if you sit long enough and if you're still long enough, you'll hear it, you'll know. The Pisces full moon is the culmination of all of those gut instincts just kind of rolled into one beautiful astrological burrito and you sit with it, you take a big bite and you're like, you know what? This thing is for me. This may challenge my fear. This may challenge my anxiety. This may challenge my self-worth or my entire existence or make me rebel against my entire family or my entire community, but there's something more here. I cannot live without this. I don't want to live without this. What is that? Who is that? Pisces taps even deeper into unconditional love. This says that this very same thing that is calling you and may even equally want you is the same thing that would pour into you. But are you open and willing and ready to pour into it? And if you're not, are you going to be okay with living the rest of your life without it? Is that going to be something that you can really stomach? Can you accept that? Is that okay for you? And if it is, fine. But if it isn't, there's a part of you that has to go back, pick up the pieces, harmonize, love, try, pursue, secure, stabilize, build it once again. And it is worth that risk. Now this week, Venus is going to be squaring off with Mars on the 16th. Venus is feminine energy. Mars is masculine energy. The two of them together, it's not that they're biting, fighting heads. I'm going to call, their, I'm going to say that they're biting heads, okay? I almost originally said biting heads, and I'm just going to go with that because it can be very sexual. <laughs> like, it can be, like, that little, like, love bite, you know? 
So these two planets are going to be biting at each other. <clears throat> it doesn't feel bad. It feels pretty good if you're into that kind of stuff, you know? Um, Venus in Virgo is in her mind. She's a perfectionist. She knows exactly what it is that she wants. And she wants things done in a specific way. If you ask her, she will tell you. But Mars in Gemini, you got to ask the question, okay? Mars in Gemini is very inquisitive. It's curious. It, it asserts in a way that might be a little unpredictable and unstable and weird and kooky, but fucking do it, okay? Just do it. So the two of them are ruled by the same planet, Mercury. Mercury is now retrograde. So even though it's not the perfect epitome of like love at first type type of connection because there is clearly some type of, um, what do I want to call this? I don't want to say abrasion, but irritation that's happening here within these two planets it's worth it for them to fight past that in order to figure out their differences. They do see eye to eye. They're both ruled by, currently, the same planet, the same energies. And that planet is sitting in the sign of Libra, which wants to harmonize and connect and make things right and make things fair. I want to hear you out. Let me ask the question. Okay. Sun trying Pluto, Pluto retrograde on the 18th, and um, Mercury directly opposing Jupiter – Jupiter's also retrograde, and this is also happening on the 18th, is going to make the ability to work through these differences that much more powerful and that much more greater than what it could be. So this week is filled with amazing, amazing opportunities for reconciliation, connection, rebuilding hope within yourself, finding inspiration again within your business projects, deeper, deeper emotional, psychological healing. I mean, the list goes on and on. So, what is your plan for this week? What are you going to do? What are you drawn to? What can't you live without? What is it about it specifically? Why is it so worth it to you? I'm setting the intention that each one of you are courageous and pull from a place deep within your heart, your heart space. The vertex falls in the sign of Leo. Leo connects to the heart, the center of our bodies. It's where we connect to the divine Allow yourself to be led by that and allow yourself to, you know, really feel confident and inspired and put yourself out there to take that risk, take that leap of faith because it will be worth it. The part of fortune also falls in the sign of Leo. So if you needed any signs of confirmation, um, that's definitely it. <laughs> All right, my loves. So I am going to go live shortly. That's because it's Monday and I go live every Monday, damn near, at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on my YouTube channel. However, I do want to say that next week is my official solo return and I will not be showing up on the internet. Hopefully. Hopefully. I won't be showing up on the internet for that week. I will be taking that week off to just celebrate, you know, just do birthday thanks. So... <laughs> Um, thank you guys so much for an, an amazing year this last, because this is my new year technically if you think about it. So I'm just kind of like thinking about closing out this year and starting a fresh one. So thank you guys for another amazing solar return, this past solar return. It has been, it has taught me so much, but that's another topic for another podcast. It has taught me so much about myself. Thank you guys already for the birthday wishes and blessings. I receive every single one of them graciously. It means so much to me, your thoughts and prayers, like your T's and P's. Not that I'm not doing well, but just the fact that you guys think about me at any point within your life, that you see certain things or videos, random or not, that remind you of me. It really means a lot. And the fact that you guys set intention that you pray for me is, you know, my biggest one of my largest love languages, and I'm just, just so gracious and so grateful to have you guys in my life. The Hottie Life podcast has been soaring and doing really, really well. So has the YouTube channel, and so has business with candles and oils and all those things. And just the fact that I'm finding people who are like-minded in magic and astrology and, and intention setting is just everything to me. And this has just been an, another year where I can really – show up to the world and live my purpose and and that's the biggest gift one of the biggest gifts of my life one of the biggest blessings of my life and I have to thank you so thank you guys so much again for hanging out with me here on Bahati Life podcast or if you're streaming in on Bahati Life YouTube thank you and I do want to invite you to subscribe to this podcast because there's plenty more information where this came from until then I will see you guys in my next video
to my next podcast. Bye. You were created to live a life of magic, abundance, love, and blessing, all of which will be up to you to call into your life with perfect divine timing. Mahati Life Apothecary is the magical home of Jessica Alexandria, where you will find a wide variety of mystical items to help you to manifest your heart's truest desires, as well as tools to help you tap into your unlimited spiritual potential. Browse the online apothecary and find hand-fixed candles to magnetize your intentions towards you. You'll find thyme and star-soaked conjure oils charged to anoint your petitions, your body, and personal magical items. You'll also find the highest quality of herbs for creating your own potions and concoctions and even reserve time and space with Jessica Alexandria herself who will work with you to create something special and truly yours. Each item found within the apothecary are created with intention in alignment with the movement of the stars to make them even more powerful totems to bring into your own sacred space. Visit BahadiLife.com to browse the apothecary and don't forget to follow Jessica on Instagram at BahadiLife where she posts daily messages to uplift, inspire, empower, and to remind you of your magical potential along your magical journey. Blessings to each and every one of you. I'll see you there.